Welcome back, y'all. Today we're going to be looking at Claude, which is a AI language model built by Anthropic here. This is one of OpenAI's competitors. Bringing this up as we plan on doing, or I plan on doing more complex stuff when it comes to Claude and its back end as a later video that's coming out this week, you're going to learn why having and leveraging other language learning models is actually pretty advantageous in the context of building a software, but also just advantageous to know that they exist. Therefore, let's jump in. I'm going to come over here and say talk to Claude here. I will be honest with y'all right now. I'm in talks with getting a uh, access to their API so I can start showing more tutorials in that realm. But for now, let's just check out its model here. Let's see how powerful it is. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little so y'all can see it better and just talk to it like if I was talking to chat GBT and see what we can do here. First thing I'd like to point out is that this model I'm using right now is free. That being said, I don't know how many, you know, what the daily usage limit is, but with a free model, we do have the ability to add attachments. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a PDF here. The PDF I'm adding here is pretty big. It's over 42 pages long, as you see here. I'm gonna see if it's able to handle this. I'd be really impressed if it can. Let's go ahead and just add it right now. All right, so we're loading in here. It looks like there is a max of 10 megabytes here, which I think this should be under. It might be over. And what we'll do is we'll ask it to summarize the PDF. Okay, start a new chat here. So we're gonna say, summarize the main point of this PDF, hit enter. Okay, so here we go. We got our summary of that 42 page PDF. One thing I wanna point out is that this is free. So this is the, we only have this capability with ChatGPT in the context that you were a plus user, which is nice here. We have the option to retry, uh, copy the response. It does seem like I'm not able to edit my previous input. So keep that in mind here. Let's go ahead and keep conversating with this model here. We're gonna say, okay. Can you give me a thesis and um, we'll say three and we'll say five sources I could use to back up this PDF? I'm actually not sure if this can connect to the internet. It may not be able to do that. It may just be purely off its back end. Also, I'm going to ask when it was trained up to. I'm curious because right now ChatGPT is trained up to 2020, April of 2023. It's going to say 2024. That would not make sense. But let's go ahead and see its output here. So here we go. Thesis rapid reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is critical for the next decade. And then we got potential sources here. So notice how they're all sub 2023. I'm going to go ahead and ask. Actually, I'm going to start a new chat here. So let's find out how we do that together. Um, we might go right here. Okay, so we can either rename or delete the chat here. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to say up to what time are you uh, say what? trained up to Let's see what it comes up with here okay let's say so do you have knowledge of what happened a month ago let's see so it seems like the context that this is used is it doesn't really have a specific timeline that is trained on it's more in the context of helping you achieve certain tasks that being said as a conversational model in the context of using this in API and software, this could be very advantageous due to the fact that most of the time when you're you know, formatting or reformatting data, you are just using it uh, and you don't really care what happened yesterday. You don't care if Christmas is in three weeks. You are just using it to you know, leverage the ability that AI has when it comes to sentiment analysis, summary and stuff of this nature. So in an API context, this is valuable. At a conversational level as me just wondering, hey, what happened yesterday? That's not helpful. Knowing that though, let's go ahead and see what else we can do with Anthropic here as right now I'm leaning towards that maybe it's power, it's true power comes out its API. What is my daily usage limit? This is really lasered in here. So basically the use case here isn't gonna be out of no scope. As you know, ChatGPT can really start jumping around. This one's very trained and very specific. So it seems like it is kind of more set up in the context of like, let's just achieve very specific task here and kind of proceed from there. Write me a essay on the topic of why mm, coffee helps in the morning. <laughs> that might be biased and I spelled morning wrong. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let it generate what it wants to generate. And then I'm gonna say, can you give me the sources you've used in order to come up with this? As I'm trying to gut check and I'm trying to understand what data it's trained on and how it's coming up with these answers. Okay, so how, what were your sources for this? And I just noticed 
right above the little message thing, it tells you how many messages. So unfortunately, I do not have any specific sources site since I generate this essay based on my own knowledge. Okay, what is your knowledge based on? This is like those movies where it's like, we need to get the answer and I only have two messages left and I have to prompt it perfectly. I don't actually have specific knowledge or sources I'm drawing from to write about, like, okay. I don't have personal experiences to pull with prompting. Okay, interesting. So this is taking the angle that ChatGPT is not taking, where it's being very much more transparent, like, hey, don't pin me on anything. Anything I say here, I'm just a language model. While ChatGPT alternatively would probably could have gave me an answer that was correct or an answer that was seemed correct, but they were confidently wrong in it being correct. So keep that in mind, that seems like a big difference between the models here. I think that kind of sums up what's going on here with Anthropic. I'll be honest with you, I'm more excited to use their API as that seems to be the more powerful use case when it comes to uh, the ability to leverage their AI. So if you feel like you learned something up to this point though, let me know in the comments if you wanna see more videos like this. Also, make sure to leave a like if it's completely free and it helps me here out. I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here where we're just diving into a bunch of different stuff when it comes to AI and language learning models. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.